What's up everyone? Real quick before this video starts, if you have a smartphone then you know it can be pretty hard to find a good game on it. But let me tell you, Raid Shadow Legend is one of the most ambitious and fun RPG games I have ever played on any console. It gets updates, there's a story mode, an online versus mode, and best of all you can get it completely for free. There are over 400 champions for you to collect and customize, and look at these amazing graphics. My favorite champion is definitely Gallic. I think it looks really cool. It has almost a perfect score on the Play Store with almost 200,000 reviews. Almost 10 million players worldwide have already downloaded the game in just 3 months. This game is getting really big really fast so make sure you get a head start. By clicking on only my link below in the description you can download the game and you'll get 50,000 silvers. Plus you're gonna get an extra reward every day for 90 days. Thank you so much to Raid Shadow Legend for sponsoring this video. Roy is an aggressive, rushdown sword character. With a scorching hot combo game, he plays heavily on shield pressure, anti-airing and conditioning. He has insanely quick airspeed and fastfall, allowing him to move around opponents very quickly as well as he has aerial burst options that he can approach with or punish with from further away than you'd expect. It also means that he is very susceptible to being comboed. The tip of Roy's sword has a weak sour spot and the rest of the sword has a sweet spot that hits extremely hard. The Sour Spot can be very beneficial however since it'll consistently launch opponents for tech situations and allow you to combo into things that the Sweet Spot wouldn't allow you to combo into. Your objective is to overwhelm the opponent with aggression and find your way around their defensive options. The focus of his neutral can be broken down pretty easily. 30% of his neutral is all about pressuring the ground and spacing around shield to try choking out their ground game and make them feel like they have to jump in order to be able to deal with you at all. The other 30% of neutral is covering short hops once they jump to start a combo, and the other 30% of neutral is covering full hops once they start full hopping to also start a combo. The rest 10% of neutral is adjusting to rolls and spot dodges if they start doing it. Once you get a hit, it's important to very naturally and consistently follow through with the combo, and end the combo by either launching them off stage to start ledge traps, or end the combo by launching them above you to play a juggling game, where you try hitting them in the air to keep them juggled, or by bursting down their landing options. The first thing to master is movement, second is shield pressure to choke out the ground, and the third is combos. He has a really good dash dance for positioning sake, as well as he can full hop and B reverse his first swing of double edge dance to fake out his aggression and mix up his movement really quickly in the air. Here's how you execute the B reverse. First off, you always start off by full hopping to the left or right. So if you're dashing towards the right direction and full hop, then all you have to do is keep holding right, press B, then immediately flick the control stick to the other direction a few frames after. So it's basically just jump forward, press B, and then as quickly as possible tap to the other direction. Or you jump forward, press side B behind you, and then tap to the other direction. Forward air, back air, and up air all work the same against shield. He can buffer an aerial or land it. If you buffer an aerial against shield, it won't be safe no matter how you space it most of the time, as after the block you'll still be airborne and can easily get punished out of shield. You could of course take a risk and cross up in the process to make it harder to punish, but generally the buffered aerials are much more for anti-airing and comboing. Even if you don't space it, as long as you land an aerial low against the shield, it'll be safe. You'll be able to shield any attack out of shield, as well as you can spot dodge, full hop, or dash away to avoid getting grabbed. All of these evasive options are important to mix up for aggressive purposes. Spacing it or crossing it up is of course always more beneficial as now you can shield safely without risking getting grabbed. As well as you also give yourself the option to be able to follow up with more aggression. Landing aerials aren't only good against shield, but they also give you a bigger reward if hit since they'll combo into another grounded move at low percents, or combo to an aerial at higher percents to potentially kill. The unique thing about neutral air is that you can buffer this aerial, and as long as you fast fall it, you'll land with the second hit low on shield, 
and you'll be able to spot dodge grabs, but you'll still lose to really quick attacks out of shield, so you'll always want to space it. By running in first, then release the control stick to stop, then short hop, slightly delay the neutral air and fast fall it while you drift back. Or you jump and delay the neutral air while crossing it up. Or just stick to pressuring with forward air and back air and up air as they are safer to space with anyway. Especially since you can parry the second hit after blocking the first one. Jumping in with it will allow you to anti-air short hops really well and start a combo. You are even able to connect a buffered neutral air into a slightly delayed neutral air to get the optimal combo extensions. Against fast fallers, if you hit a sour spot, it'll set up into a tech situation starting around 30 till around 50%. If you land the first hit of neutral air, it'll combo. Connecting the sweet spot will allow you to combo into forward smash around 85% without rage, and with max range starting around 60%. To approach with forward air optimally, you either jump in from far away, then press back while in the air, and C stick towards an opponent, or run in first, release the stick to stop, then jump straight up or even slightly back and use the C stick for the forward air. The sweet spot of forward air will start launching opponents for a tech situation around 10 to roughly 25% while the sour spot starts around 25 to roughly 50%, while the sweet spot of back air forces techs at around 20 to roughly 35%, and the sour spot starts around 60 to 80%. To combo, at starting percents, you'll need to jump towards an opponent with the sweet spot, which is safe since even if they shield, you'd cross up anyway. You're also able to short hop forward air and double jump forward air before you land, to make the first hit of forward air a bit safer but generally you will mostly be using this in combos. Buffering and up air can be really good for punishing opponents above you and juggling. It's a really safe aerial to land with, but will of course be better if slightly spaced. If landed, it'll lead you to almost anything, as well as it can kill confirm into back air at high percents, making it really good for corner pressure. Connecting the sour spot allows you to kill confirm as well. There are many ways to play around and punish full hops. You can full hop forward air and start a combo at low percents which leads into a juggle situation. And if they never did full hop, you can immediately double jump out, forward air again to wall them out, or fall with up air and safely cross them up. Or you full hop back air which is better at higher percents, and will also allow you to do a second aerial before landing to pressure the ground if they never did full hop. You can full hop and fall with reverse up air, or just buffer a short hop up air when under them. On top of all of this, the neutral air, forward air, and up air can shield poke really easily as long as you've damaged the shield. One big thing that Roy struggles against is the parry system, so whenever his aggression starts becoming predictable and too obvious, you'll want to start getting tomahawk grabs and fake out your aggression much more with B-reverses and especially double jump mix-ups. Down air isn't so safe against shield, but it can be landed and crossed up against opponents with slow out of shield options. The sweet spot can spike, but it's really hard to hit, and if you get the sour spot you'll just launch them above you. So most of the time it's not worth going for and it's better to stay on stage to ledge trap and not risk getting reversed, edge guarded, or ledge trapped, as even when you hit the sour spot against a 2 frame it can combo at mid to high percents. If you're feeling on fire, however, then go off stage and get that satisfying spike. The most important thing about edge guarding is simply knowing how far Roy can go, how many aerials he can swing, and how to cover specific areas.
you'll mostly be using Jab as a quick out of shield option or as additional pressure after a landed spaced aerial, which can potentially stuff out aggression. Using it too close is punishable. Space it however and it's safe, but using it multiple times can also be punished. Hitting it at max range will only push opponents away, and will require you to make a read on the opponent's next move in order to capitalize on it. Connecting the sweet spot will give you its fullest combo potential, and even then this move will always be amazing for combo extensions, especially with the help of platforms. To kill confirm into back air, there are two ways you can execute this, both of which are pretty hard and demanding. The first method of execution is by dashing towards an opponent, immediately tap to the other direction at the same time as you press shoulder button for jump and C-stick towards the opponent, while also now drifting towards the opponent. The second method of execution is by dashing towards them and use the C-stick at the same time, then quickly jump within two frames after the C-stick to jump cancel the tilt. This attack cancel method is very timing based and the first method is recommended anyway so that you can also do a full hop back air as full hopping isn't possible with the second method. Doing a full hop can especially be important if you connect the first hit of neutral air first then jab as they get launched further up. The difficult part is adjusting to DI. No matter what their DI is however you can always connect the back air and at even higher percents you can just kill with forward air as well. You can also possibly kill confirm into a jump, double edge dance. It's a bit nuanced, and depending on weight and fall speed you'll either be short hopping towards them and double edge dance forward, forward, up, forward, 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 or forward, up, up, forward. Double edge dance while grounded is mostly for whiff punishing and mixing up your regression. It's also used to punish spot dodges. Swinging forward four times is not very consistent, and you'll mostly end up hitting with the sour spot that way. So instead you'll want to do forward forward up forward for the sweet spot to kill really early, especially at the edge of the stage. Otherwise at lower percents you can end it upwards to potentially find a juggle or downwards for the most amount of damage or shield damage. If you ever get to break a shield, you'll kill the opponent even at 0%, as Flare Blade is the most powerful move in the game if fully charged. It has very little end lag, making it pretty safe against shield when slightly charged. It's easily punished if uncharged and way too close to them though. It can be charged at the ledge to potentially hit a 2 frame. It'll punish a ledge stall, and if you keep charging it, it can punish a regular getup, punish ledge jump if done with the right timing, and punish a roll. It'll always lose to getup attack however, so it's never worth charging for a ledge trap, unless you rarely want to release it early and bait it out. And if Roy is spacing himself a little bit further back so that the ledge attack misses, you'll always want to go for ledge jump as it'll never get punished. It can also be useful as a B-reverse mix-up or as an edge guarding tool, as it can cover a pretty big area and kill really early if charged. Otherwise, you'll mostly be going off stage with forward air or counter. Just make sure that you save your double jump so you can recover after. His recovery is decent but very vulnerable, so you'll always want to be careful going off stage. On the other hand, the multi hits on his recovery can potentially cause a stage spike. It doesn't go very far, but it does allow you to have some control and angle it for mix up sake. Being off stage without a double jump will usually mean you will get edge guarded and killed, so whenever you can, you should save your double jump and recover as low as possible. And even then, whenever you feel like the opponent is about to go off stage and hit you, you should also be ready to recover high. 
It's a pretty fast out of shield option in close range situations, or before something hits the shield against predictable incoming pressure, since you'll be able to tank the hits with super armor and potentially kill at high percents, which by the way you want to DI down and away. Although this super armor is non-existent when used in the air, the knockback is also significantly reduced if you initiate it while airborne. As for the safety of jab and tilts, it's purely matchup dependent. Doing it at too close range is easily punishable, and spacing it at max range for the sour spot isn't effective either. But hitting with the middle hitbox is the best in terms of safety. If they can't punish it, you can abuse it as shield pressure. And of course, if they can deal with jab or forward tilt, then you'll need to be much more careful with it. Forward tilt can also be pivot cancelled by running, turning around, and at the same time C-stick towards the direction you were originally running. And you'll slide in with the forward tilt to catch landings and whiff punish. At low percentage, the sour spot will start launching the opponent at a low angle and force a tech situation. While the sour spot won't start launching them for a tech situation until mid percent. Down tilt will be safe against all matchups, however, giving you the option to shield after, dash away, full hop, or attack again, making it your main grounded move to pressure the ground with and identifying the opponent's defensive habits and take advantage in the long run. Just keep in mind that against really fast characters, you still want to space this move as at close range it won't be safe. You're also able to dash back and hold the control stick down and slightly behind you and press A to be able to do an immediate dash back down tilt. At mid percents, the sweet spot will start launching the opponent at a low angle and force a tech situation, while the sour spot won't start launching for a tech situation until really high percents. Up tilt is an amazing anti-air against opponents falling down on you, which can be really good during the juggling phase, or when you're putting on corner pressure to punish jumps in. As for smashes, they are not safe against shield, and are more meant for hard reads, tech chases, and punishing slow overcommitments. Down smash can be a quick and strong option out of a perfect shield. Up smash can be used as a hard commitment against rolls in, or as an out of shield option to cover your surroundings and push the opponent up into the burst. And dash attack is unsafe to use, but can potentially be used as a whiff punisher or for tech chasing. During the ledge trap, his down tilt and down smash barely hits hanging opponents, and even when it does, it'll barely scratch the opponent. In any case, you can still be standing here shielding which allows him to grab regular get-ups or neutral air, which also catches ledge jumps, while back air and up air can also catch ledge jumps. And against rolls, you can back air, do a landing up air, or jump out of shield and double edge dance. None of these will really kill, however, so finding something like a simple jab, forward tilt, or falling back air or falling up air instead will always be more rewarding at higher percents against regular get-ups or ledge jumps. In other words, getting hard punishes by reading and predicting their ledge options is much more rewarding than always trying to safely ledge trap. As a mix-up, you can also run off stage and double jump back in with back air or find a ledge trump if they keep stalling at the ledge. And even if they ledge roll, you can jump in with one hit neutral air. His corner pressure is really good, however, so doing a regular get up and shielding only means you'll have to potentially try dealing with a harder situation. To get back from the ledge, Roy has the ability to double jump in with a delayed neutral air and cross up, or jump in with a quick forward air and land with up air to catch short hops or punish the opponents for not shielding. This can also be done with ledge jumps, of course, to catch full hops. And finally, grabbing is extremely important for Roy. Most of his kit will naturally draw you to attacking, but conditioning shields and grabbing is just as important as finding a hit. Down throw will be your main combo starter, as at 0% it can start leading into neutral air on a few characters. And for the ones that neutral air won't combo, you can instead do an up air. Something to keep in mind is that characters with a 2 frame option won't get comboed by the down throw until roughly 10-15% as long as you follow their DI. And at mid percent, some characters might get hit by down throw to up air. Even then, if they jump out, you can try catching them, and if they air dodge, you'll frame trap them. 
to execute the down throw to up air perfectly, you'll want to down throw, then perfectly time it dash forward for one frame, then buffer in up air, so you get an up air with full drift speed. This requires a ton of practice and is purely timing based. And if they DI in, you'll be able to get up air really easily. Forward throw can be used as well as a mix up, since it either forces them to tech or they will jump, which you can try anti airing. Back throw is for throwing opponents behind you and try reading their next option. If they jump in, you can easily anti-air it. If they try slowly grabbing the ledge, you can try hitting them. However, they can always air dodge towards the ledge or recover really low, so most of the time it'll only set up for a ledge trap. And lastly, up throw is a kill throw at really high percents. To deal with Roy, you have to play the neutral in the same way he plays it in terms of splitting your focus into 30% of the time, pressure the ground, 30% of the time pressure his short hop, 30% of the time pressure his full hop, and the rest 10 will be about adapting to his rolls or spot dodges. As well as you need to pay attention to what he is trying to cover to bait out a commitment and punish it. And once you have him in disadvantage, combo him as well as you can, cover his landings as much as possible, and don't let him recover back to stage. And whenever he is comboing you, DI away as much as you can so that he gets the sour spots. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to support this channel, then please consider helping me out on Patreon. There's a lot of awesome rewards that you can get. You'll get sessions, and you'll also be able to watch these artifs way earlier than anyone else. And if you can't support me on Patreon, then please consider sharing these videos to your friends.